In this lecture, we will be examining the uh, Sui dynasty of China, along with the Tang, um, as much as uh, any other Chinese dynasties. These two were responsible for reunifying China, for strengthening the idea of a Chinese empire, and for establishing the foundation of modern Chinese civilization. Uh, again, the, uh, the name is pronounced Sui. The Sui reunified the Chinese Empire after more than a century of north-south disunion and civil wars. To accomplish their goals, the Sui dynasty enacted a series of high taxes and very heavy labor demands on the Chinese people. The Sui dynasty is noted for its work in commencing construction of what would become known as the Grand Canal. Uh, the Sui also made substantial improvements to the Great Wall, which had fallen into a state of decay over the previous two centuries. This map shows uh, the location of the components of the Grand Canal, which was a series of canals and waterways and waterway connections that uh, linked the Yangtze and Yellow River basins. During the Sui era, approximately 700 miles of connections were constructed. Um, today, there are over 1,100 miles of connections in what uh, collectively is known as the Grand Canal. The main role of the canal project was to deliver grain to urban centers. The Grand Canal system allowed the Chinese to build and sustain cities of unprecedented magnitude because of their ability to feed ever larger populations in these urban centers. The canals also improved internal transportation within the empire. It made uh, internal trade more efficient and helped the imperial government more capably administer a large and growing empire. The founder of the Sui dynasty was the Sui Wendi. He was known as a hard-working bureaucrat who was uh, known to put in up to eight, 18 hours a day as emperor. The reign of Sui Wenti was particularly prosperous, especially in comparison with the relative chaos and poverty of the previous two centuries. Records from the time period indicate that the Sui uh, imperial government at its peak was able to oversee the production of food surpluses to feed the nation for up to 50 years. While there might be an element of boastfulness in this claim, uh, it is apparent that this was a time of unprecedented economic and agricultural growth. Uh, de to deter theft and robbery, um, major problems in the countryside, especially in and along routes, Sway decreed a penalty of death for criminals found guilty of stealing or robbing fellow subjects of the empire. Sway ordered all private weapons seized in an effort to consolidate control and to prevent future rebellions. Subjects in regions near the imperial borders, however, were exempt and were still permitted to hold weapons, this being an extra line of defense against invasion. The manner of uh, Sui's death in 604 CE is of some debate. Some accounts claim that his successor, the Emperor Yang, may have personally killed Sui, or that uh, Yang may have ordered the death of the Emperor Sui. It's clear, of course, that Yang, who happened to be the second son of the Emperor Sui, benefited from the death of the emperor and the succession of Yang as emperor began the downfall of the Sui dynasty. This is an image from the 7th century of the emperor Yang. As mentioned earlier, he was the second son of the emperor Wen of Sui and thus the second emperor of the Sui dynasty. Um, early on he served with distinction in military campaigns before ascending to the throne. As the second son, he normally would not be the next in line as emperor, uh, but Yang engaged in a campaign to discredit his older brother to win the favor of his father and be named crown prince or next in line. In, particularly, in particular, he orchestrated a propaganda campaign to make his brother appear to be rather frivolous and that he spent too much time in bed with his concubines. This is probably... Um, uh, not substantiated, um, and certainly Yang himself um, had, a, had a very large series of concubines, 
but uh, anything he could do to discredit his brother, he would. Yang's reign as emperor is noted for two particular features, his efforts at commencing massive construction projects and his tyrannical rule. Um, some say he, some historians and some uh, uh, Chinese traditions hold that he was among the worst of Chinese emperors. Although the canal network um, overseen by um, Yang would increase trade, increase imperial wealth, and uh, help better integrate the empire, it did sow the seeds of the downfall of the Sui dynasty. Um, like their counterparts in the Qin dynasty, if you think back to our earlier discussions, these Sui leaders conscripted uh, people to work on their projects. Approximately 5.5 million imperial subjects were uh, drafted into working on the canal project. This put a severe strain on the economy and on the imperial budget. This uh, mass conscription, coupled with another massive conscription of a million workers to rebuild the Great Wall, led to numerous peasant revolts. Um, at one point, the Emperor Yang even took the unprecedented step of uh, conscripting peasant women for his building projects, a move that was met with fierce resistance and which further emboldened rebels. Some peasants even broke their own arms and legs to avoid serving in the military, and the government eventually was forced to pass harsh laws against the practice of self-maiming in the effort to avoid military service. These disruptions in the countryside also led to significant downturns in agricultural production, leading in some regions to famine and starvation, and uh, in large urban centers leading to dramatic price increases in food, which of course um, leads people to rebel even more. Um, however, the tipping point for the Sui dynasty seems to have been a series of military losses in Korea and Manchuria. Um, Emperor Yang was the last leader of the Sui dynasty. He was killed by his own troops in a coup d'etat in 618 CE, and this would pave the way for the rise of the Tang dynasty, T-A-N-G, which we'll talk about in our next lecture.